Hi, everybody. Just me tonight, uh, hanging out here. Um, so it's just you and me, guys. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well today and is ready to make a super fun project. Uh, we're going to be making a fun crisscross bracelet that I designed. Um, I'll show it to you here when we uh, turn the camera down. But what's everybody been up to this week? Anything fun? Me? Mm, not so much. <laughs> Just kind of hanging there, in there, doing my thing, doing projects. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Sherry. Hi, everybody. You just got me this week. <laughs> I have Joan in the background there, as always, helping us. And thanks so much, Joan, for that. I can't make a heart very good, but <laughs> she rocks. So she's keeping us straight. Cleaning house, yard work. Doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Does not sound fun to me, guys. Deb. Hi, Deb. Yeah, I should be outside more this week. I guess I should have, especially today. It was beautiful, but I have not been feeling the best, and that's not unusual. So I've just been kind of laying low this week, doing a few videos here or there. Um, but hi, Zach. You just got back from Myrtle Beach. Oh, uh, you're finally going to go to Atlanta. Are you lucky, duck? Helena, hi from New York. Hi. Hi, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it would have been a good week to do some yard work. Unboxing and switching everyone over from the move, Sabrina says. Okay, okay. <laughs> I did post some YouTube videos this week, guys. So if you haven't caught them, head over and check them out. Just some fun stuff, and I've been working on designs, and actually this video will be going up tomorrow for this, which is my, um, I guess, what is that? That's <laughs> Patrick Star is all I can think of. Um, starfish. Starfish earrings. Sorry. <laughs> It'd be cute if it was Patrick Star hanging there. So that'll be going up tomorrow on my YouTube channel. Hi, from Riverside, California. Hot here today. Okay. Facebook user, who are you? <laughs> um, when you uh, come in to our feed on Facebook, you do need to give StreamYard permission. Oh, thanks, Sabrina. Hi, Amber. Amber's here in the comments with us tonight. So, okay. So, this is what we're going to make, guys. And when I turn the camera down, you'll see it much better. But this is called a crisscross bracelet. Okay? So let me get the camera turned down, and we're going to get started. Okay, guys? I'm just going to go black for just a moment so I don't make you seasick. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Just adjust that a hair smidge. Okay, let me flip it up. There we go. Sorry, guys. I just have the long camera, so we got to make do. Okay, guys. So here is our project for this week. And you can see the glistening size 6 fire polish underneath the crisscrosses. Okay. So you can see here, these are 11 OC beads on the top. And I have added some four millimeter fire polish in the center of those. And doing the crisscross gives it a lacy appearance. <laughs> Vicky says, ooh, I spy a good excuse for ending house cleaning. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So yeah, we're gonna make this this week, guys. So let's, without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> so I am using the original loom get these camera angles. <laughs> I am using the original loom. As usual, this is my favorite, although there are a bunch of looms that Jules makes that I absolutely adore. I'm just an old school girl. So, so we need to put our bar in first. <clears throat> Hi, Vicki. 
or excuse me, hi Becky. And what you're going to do, this is my tummy down here, guys. Okay. This is where I'm sitting. So I'm going to press the bottom of this into my tummy. I'm going to put my bar into the bottom like so. I guess that's not the best angle for that. There we go. And then I'm going to flex the, the loom slightly. Okay. Don't bend it. Just a little flex and pop your rod in just like so. And you can see it gives you that little U shape that's going to give you, when you take this rod out, it's going to make your uh, warps nice and snug, nice and tight. And then your, your wefts will go on very nicely. Okay. I'm going to be using the 0.5 hemp this week, <clears throat> but you could use anything you want to use as far as the base of it. Leather would be pretty. You could use the one millimeter hemp, anything your little heart desires um, for that. So this will be our base. I am using the pink wildfire. I'm using some 11 O's for this project. That'll come down the line a little bit here. I am using four and a half strands of six millimeter fire polish. If you want a six inch bracelet, it's going to be 27 rows and 25 beads come per strand. So I would recommend a sitting in four strands, get five if you want to make a six inch uh, bracelet. Excuse me. We just have some rude people in our town there. If you heard that bike go by. So I recommend getting five strands, guys. And then you're going to need some four millimeter fire polish for the centers. We'll be using those with the seed beads, okay? So to get started, we're going to, of course, warp. And I'm just going to turn our jewel loom over. And I'm going to take my hemp. I'm going to give myself a little bit of breathing room here. And I'm going to wrap it around twice. And I'm going to tie on, okay? And I'm going to knot it twice. All right. Then I'm going to turn this over like so. And I'm going to find a position on my loom and I'm going to lay my hemp into it, okay? You can see how it sits down in those grooves. Now, this first one does not have to be exactly in the same spot. I just kind of eyeball it and I lay it in approximately at the same spot. And then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna grab that little nipple that's sticking out there with my hemp and I'm gonna keep my tension the whole time, guys, okay? We are going to leave four open grooves for our fire polish. So let's see, one, two, three, and four. We need to pop over one more. We have five there for some reason. And you want to leave four spaces, guys. So then that way your six millimeter will fit very nicely in there with um, four grooves. Just trying to get that over without letting too, too much of my tension go. Okay. Okay. So now that we have those four grooves laid in, we're going to go over to the other side. Do the same thing, one, two, three, four, and put it into the fifth one, okay? Wrap around that nipple again. I'm sorry for the use of the word nipple, but you know, <laughs> I that's what I think of. It's just a little nipple sticking out, so. One, two, three, and four on this side. Go across. We're actually gonna have four lines of beads so it's four and four but that means you're going to need five strands of hemp because you need one extra line of hemp or whatever material you're using than the amount of rows that you want to have okay so i'm doing the same thing here i'm going to count my four again one two three four and then across one, two, three, four. And we have four rows now. So we're going to put our four um, strands 
One, two, three. Let's this one needs over just a smidge. Okay. You see that? And then grab the back again there. And then bring it up over the top. And we're making our fourth row. So I've got one, two, three. Pop it over one more. And the younger you are, probably the better you'll be able to see the grooves. Sometimes I have to count a couple times just to make sure I have what I need. Three. You know, your eyes start going. I never had to wear glasses before in my life. And now as I turned, well when I was 47, basically, is when it was like, you know what, you need like a real prescription and real bifocals, you know. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm just going to turn this over right here. And you saw me grab around that with my hemp. And the reason I do that is, again, keeping the tension. And I'm going to wrap that around two or three times. And I'm going to pull this over, still holding that tension, keep my thumb on that. Okay, and I'm going to trim my hemp. I'm going to give myself a nice bit of cord to tie off with. Okay, and I'm just going to proceed to do that. I'm going to just put my, sorry, my other, it's banging into my other looms there, if you hear that. Put my strand underneath all of my rows that I've created. And just make a knot. Just go up through the knot here. Take your end and put it up through the center. Just like a regular old knot. Okay. And then just pull that snug. Once you get that first one in, that's great. It's holding pretty good. But I always like to double up. <clears throat> and you can probably see this one better because I'm not holding it with my hand as much. So you just go underneath the warps. And then come through your circle on the other side <clears throat> and knot it up so now that we have this nice and snug we can turn our loom over and we can take the rod out okay we're ready so now we can start adding our beads i've already um put my needle on to my wildfire i always recommend um, an, a wingspan and a half to two wingspans to use to do a project. So it's a good place, rule of thumb, to start. Maybe a little extra, but it'll be, you know, it's better to have a little extra than not enough. You can always add wildfire in if need be, but... So I'm just going to take our wildfire... And I'm going to go part of the way up here. I usually use like this hole as a guideline and just go slightly above it. That seems to work for me on giving me uh, enough on either side to be able to tie off and end my bracelet. So I'm just going to do a couple knots. They don't have to be super, super tight because you can weave those back in. You can untie that at the end and weave it back in. So just a couple knots there loosely. And... We're going to pick up some fire polish. Now, on my fire polish, guys, I have a variety of tech, or, um, finishes on my fire polish. It is um, some matte finishes. There's some opaque. There's AB. There's just crystal. There's a variety. And I recommend it because it gives you a nice look on your base. So here's our base that I made. And you can see how it gives you just that. It's not just plain. It's not just plain. I think it gives it some interest. So, so what I do is I just basically um, mix them all together. And then I just kind of go with an opaque one, a clear one, an opaque one, a clear one, whatever that ends up being. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up. I'm going to move this into the camera just a bit more. An opaque, a clear, another opaque. And you can see these are different uh, finishes on these, but they're still opaque beads, and that's fine. And then a clear. You could do it however you like, but like I said, I just like the way this looks. So I put my beads on, and I'm going to pull those beads. They're in my hand now, and I'm taking my strands, and I'm pulling those beads 
down to the end of the strand. I'm going to take my hand up underneath and I'm going to push these beads up between the warps. And we're going to have one bead per lane, basically. Look at these as lanes. They are warps, but then you know we're having four beads for four lanes, all right? And then we're just going to take, and this is all underneath at this point, guys, and then you're just going to take your needle and you're going up and over this right warp and you're going to go through your beads on top of the warps. So always making sure you're keeping your needle on top of the warps as you go across. Because basically what that does for you guys, that locks everything in. If you don't do that, you'll drop beads, you know, things will happen where <clears throat> they just won't be as secure. So make sure you always do this. All right. So we have our first line of six millimeter fire polish. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clear, opaque, clear, opaque, opposite of what we just did. So we'll do clear, opaque, clear, opaque. So there are some gorgeous fire polish on a jewel site, the clear, the AB especially is like sings to my soul and that's what's in here. So if you like bling bling guys, you'll love those AB beads. So dropping those down. Feeding my needle and my thread underneath and then pushing the beads up between. And this is the, the concept, the whole length of the bracelet that you want. Okay, so if you want a six inch bracelet, you're going to do six inches of this. All right, I'll do a few more because this is a basic concept. And I know that a lot of my girls here know what they're doing already. And for the newbies, I hope that would be enough to show you. And if not, you can always rewatch the video if necessary. So I'm going back to my other pattern here, my first. And it's just every other, the whole way up, guys. Same thing, I'm dropping my beads down. Push those up between and lock it in. Okay. Just looking to see what you guys are talking about. Are we talking about this bracelet now? Are we all being distracted by my bling on my wrist? The earth tone kit, yes, it's gorgeous if that's what you're referring to. So we'll add a couple more rows, just doing this. Okay, Lizzie says yes, so holy. <laughs> now class. <laughs> We're not paying attention. Although this is a gorgeous kit. I highly recommend it. <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just do a few more and then we will move on to our loops. Because that's going to be the loops are your time consuming part of the bracelet. This is a basic easy technique here just to build your base. Well, thank you so much, Sabrina. I appreciate that, honey. I love it too. I love this this kit. It's just a, a winner. Jules just curates some some beauties. Okay, so does everybody have this concept down? Do we have any questions on this before we move on? Nobody? Going once, going twice. Okay, guys, so that's the basic concept on that. All right, we're going to move over to our finished base now. And you can see how drill worthy that is. I know I flashed it to you a couple times, but I can't even stand up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we're going to start doing our loops next. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to switch over to a seed bead needle. Only because, for me personally, I like to use this for my seed beads. 
you can use your jewel loom needle. It'll work fine, but I just prefer the seed bead needle. Things go smoother for me when I use this, okay? So what when you finish your base, guys, you there will be a string coming out of here with your needle on it. I did not have enough string left to be able to continue doing my loops with it. So I just tied off. I finished everything up here. I just tied it off, put some glue on it. So if you run out of thread, no big deal. You can weave back in and I'll show you that. If you have enough string hanging out here that's worth to still stitch with, then certainly use that. Just start with that. That'll actually work just perfectly. So either way works. You can put a new new strand of wildfire on or just use the existing one that you have there. So I'm just going to give myself about a wingspan and a half here. And I'm using this adorable pink wildfire. I can't get enough of it. All right. <clears throat> so I have my end here. And I'm just going to collapse the end down with my pliers a little bit so it goes in easily. And then this is a number 10 seed bead needle in case ever anyone's wondering. Yes, it would make a beautiful bracelet for a bride, Nicole. I am so into the this style. I just really love the romantic look and this kind of style just for every day personally. But today is an exception. I am wearing brown. Amber actually pointed that out earlier. She was surprised to see me wearing black and brown because it doesn't happen very often. Okay, so I have my needle threaded. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go over to the right-hand side here, and I'm going to weave my thread through. This is three rows down. Okay, this is just to start. And I'm going to go through there. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit of an end over here. What am I get? So we'll leave ourselves a little bit of an end here so we can tie off. Then I'm going to go back in through the next row up and across. I'm just weaving my thread in so I have a nice place, a nice bit of thread in there to tie off with when I'm done. And I'm just going back up to the end of the bracelet here. Okay. And then we're going to go back through that first row and we will land, oops, land on the left then. Okay. So the pattern is such that it's a, also very basic pattern, but it makes a big impact. So what you're going to do, I have, let me scooch this over a little bit. I have my 11 O's laid out here. Okay. I don't know if the light's very good today. It doesn't feel like it is. If I move this over. Does that help at all? Um, and I have two different seed beads here. They look very, very close in color. And they are. They're the same color, but they're different finishes. So I have rainbow and rosaline here. Okay. It's not doing it justice at all. The camera isn't. And then a frosted. Rosaline. Those are the colors, and those are 11 O's. And I then I have some size 4 fire polish that we're going to use as the center of our loops that we make, okay? Okay. So now that we're up at the end here, I'm going to move this other loom because I can see myself getting tangled. So I'm going to Move that. I got more looms than Heinz has pickles here tonight, guys. So <clears throat> now that I'm on the end here, I'm going to pick up 10 of my seed beads. You can start with whatever one you want, or you could use all the same too, guys. That's your call. But I'm going to pick up 10 seed beads. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you pick those ten up. You're going to push them down onto your thread. You're going to pick up a fire polish. 
And what I did is I just picked two colors so I could just go back and forth with them, just like I did with the seed beads. It gives it texture, gives it interest. So I'm just going to pick up one of my uh, size four fire polish and then add 10 more seed beads. Okay. Do you guys believe that there was a day that I would not touch seed beads to save my life? I hated seed beads so bad. My one friend, she's a bead stitcher. She loves doing that. And she always would say, oh, but there's so many beautiful varieties. I'm like, get them away from me. I cannot stand it. They're too little. I just could not go it. But now I can't get enough of them. Four, six, eight, two more. Is anybody else ever like that? Okay, so... We have 10 more on the other side, and I'm just moving those down. I'm just going to scoot this down just a hair, guys, now that we're working with seed beads. So you can see a little better. Hopefully that doesn't rock it. So we have 10, fire polish 10, simple. Okay. Then all we're going to do is here's row one. We're going to count down one, two, three. And go through on the other side of the third row. So you're going to go in the right. All right. And then you'll pull your needle through. Pull all of your thread. And now you'll get this look right here. Okay. So you can see how already it's starting to go in an angle just by doing that from first row to third row. Okay. So now we're back on the other side and we're going to do 10 of the frosted. If I can pick them up here. Two, four, six, seven. Okay. Pick up 10 here, and then we're going to add our other color of fire polish on, and then 10 more of the frosted. So basically the concept on this bracelet, guys, is a simple concept. The technique is actually pretty easy. It just looks a lot more complicated than it is, and those are my favorite, favorite kind of projects. <laughs> I like to look like it's hard, like, oh my gosh, the hours. I must have had in it, you know, but it's actually a very simple technique. So there's four. I wish my eyes would work better. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we're going to do the same exact thing, guys. We're going to drop our beads down. These are just different beads. That's all the difference is going to be here. Okay, so we have our frosted one down. And we're going to count three rows from where we ended. One, two, and three. Okay, so this is our first row. The third row is our first row. One, two, three. Okay, and you're going to go into the third row there on the right-hand side. Come on, we caught on this time. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, I love my, I have bifocals. And I also have an odd light with a magnifier, but of course it's over on my uh, jewelry bench, not on my filming table. So that would be too easy, right? Let's see, could we get a class? Oh, wait. Could we get a close-up? My screen is blurry, but it may be me. Well, I can certainly try to drop this down a little bit more for you. Is that helping at all? Let me just try to get this to focus. Okay. It's hard to see with those AB beads there. Maybe a sideways shot. 
can kind of show you. Does that help at all? Oh, Lizzie, good. Yeah, it's hard to talk and count at the same time for sure. So hopefully that helps, guys. That's where we are. All right. So then we're going to go back to our first color of our seed beads. And this is what you're going to do the whole way down your bracelet. You're going to do exactly the same step the whole way down your bracelet. Okay. We'll do some more. I'll show you some more here. And then I'll show you how to go back to get your crisscrosses. Okay. Two... Four, six, eight, nine, ten. Oh, good. I'm glad that helps. Good. Yes, I would love to have some of those magnifying glasses, Nicole. I they are they look like they would be extremely helpful. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to pick up 10 more over here. And you probably can't see that since I'm so close. So, there. Two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Same thing, guys. First rows here. This is where we came out of, that third row, but we're going to count that as our first. Okay? One, two, three. Then back in the right side on the third row. Oh, sure. That's fine, honey. Um... Or you can get it to Joan. She can certainly put the link in. We would love to, I would love to check those out. Lord knows I need them. <clears throat> so there we are so far. That's our third. Now the colors that I use, you know, they kind of blend together. Um, if you wanted it to pop more, guys, I would use, you know, if you're going to use a lighter base, use a darker um, seed bead. And fire polish, if that's the look you like. But I like a very feminine, muted, romantic look. That's what we're going for with this, okay? And let's do one more. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're done with gas. We can do one more than one more. <laughs> I'm just so impressed with myself, you know. Because usually when it's me and Amber on here, we run out of time because we're gabbing so much. But when you have to talk to yourself mostly... Doesn't quite go as fast. Okay, so there's three and four. Does anyone ever do this with their seed beads to put them on their needle? Just kind of pile your seed beads up and just run your needle into it and pick your seed beads up. It seems like I do this more often than not because it works great. I don't know if you've ever heard of that technique, but I... The only thing is then you have to go back and count and then your eyes cross and six, eight, ten. Perfect. But I like the way it works. It goes quick sometimes. And sometimes I can't pick up a seed bead to save my life doing it. But yes, Lizzie, you do that. How many are you picking up each time? I am picking up ten seed beads. These are 11 O's. And then I'm picking up a fire polish. Then I'm picking up ten more seed beads. So there's 10 on each side of the fire polish for your loop, okay? So we have 10 fire polish and 10, okay? So we have to pick up 10 more. Yeah, they are difficult to see on screen. Um, but I will do photos, guys, of course. And as always, I'll post them in the group. And if you have any questions, you know, we're always here to answer your questions. Just reach out to me and I'm happy to help you with anything. You know that. There's four. Four, five. 
Hi, Jules. 10, fire polish 10. Yes, exactly right, Maria. Who is Facebook user? You just said, I'm so late, but I love the bracelet. And thank you for that. But I want to know who you are so I can say hello. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. And again, we're in coming out of that third row, technically, but it's going to turn into our first row. And then we're going to get a one, two, and three. And in the right side. Okay. How are we doing? Everybody understanding here? <laughs> There's three. And then by doing that, sometimes you catch your needle and it flicks them. That's always lovely. Is the picture clear enough for you guys now that you can see okay? Or... Okay, so there's 10 seed beads. Oh, it's Jay. Hi, Jay. I tried to add myself or whatever it was last week so you can see my name, but don't know what I, I guess I did wrong. I was hoping I would sh it would show my name. <laughs> oh, darn it. Well, I'm glad you identified yourself, Jay, and welcome. We're always so glad to see you. Okay, so I put my 10 seed beads on, a fire polish. Fran. You're, you're, you're trying to follow. Is it still bl blurry for you, Sandy? Is it blurry for anyone else? Just making sure. I want to make sure everybody can see okay. Um, Fran, so the basic concept is, just to go over it quickly before we continue and I show you the, the uh, other way. You're going to make a base of six millimeter fire polish. And, I, and for a six millimeter fire polish, you're going to do four grooves wide and you're going to have five strands. This is a wider bracelet but i like the wider bracelets so this is kind of the what it would look like on your wrist if you want to do three rows you could certainly do that if you like a thinner bracelet and then what we're doing is we're putting on loops and then we're going to make crisscrosses okay and by making those crisscrosses we're going to use 110 seed beads and fire polish okay and what I do is I put 10 seed beads on, a fire polish, then 10 seed beads. It's a very simple concept. But, it, of course, if you have any questions, holler at me here. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so this will be, I think we're doing okay on time. Let's put this. This is the one that we're coming out of up here now, guys. This was our third row, but it is also our first row. So we're going to count one, two, and three. Same thing, go in the right side. Okay, and pull your string, and it'll give you that angled look by doing that. Okay, you're pulling back over to the left hand side. Can you see how that's working? Oh, good, Fran. I'm glad. Glad you got it. Okay, and that pulls that right into place. I didn't catch the seed beads were different sizes or just different finishes. They are the same size. They're both 11 O's, just different finishes and two different kinds of um, four millimeter fire polish. Okay. Oh, hi, Wayne. I didn't even see you come in. Good, good. Glad everybody's here tonight for sure. 
Okay, guys. So now, say for instance, we have worked our whole way down our bracelet by doing our crisscrosses or doing our angles. Basically, we'll call these. Okay. So say that's the whole way down. We did that. Now, if this is your last row of your bracelet, just for time's sake, I'll just pretend like this is the last row of my bracelet. And it couldn't be simpler. So what I do, say this last row, I finish with my crystal <clears throat> and my white fire polish. I'm going to go in now and just use my frosted and do the same exact thing the whole way back up. And that will give you your crisscrosses. So let's load up our needle. We're going to do 10 seed beads on this side. Oh, now I can see Jay. Now I can see Jay. I don't know why it wasn't before, but I can see your name now, Jay. Four, five, six. There's our 10. Yay. <laughs> all right. We're all set now, huh, Jay? Okay. And then at our fire polish, 10 more frosted. Just get our little pile build up here so we can put our needle through. Two, six, eight, nine, and ten. So we're going to go the whole way back up by doing the opposite. So this is going to be considered our first row because that's the one we're coming out of on the left-hand side at the bottom of the piece. That's what we're going to pretend this is. And then we're going to count one, two, three back up. And you can see there's one coming out of here, but that's okay. You're going to go in to that right side where that other one has also gone through. And you're going to put your needle through and pull that. Okay. And then you have your first crisscross. You can see that. This is our first crisscross. So we're basically um, going to work this the whole way up, and it gives you that lace look. Okay, so let's do a few more just to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we're coming out of this row, so we're going to add the next one is frosted beads, and so I'm going to add my rainbow beads. Thank you. So I plan to wrap with the cup chain or use it as a wefting bead. I'm very confused right now, Vicki. Are you talking to me? <laughs> I assume so. I don't know if you're talking to someone in the group. But two, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you could definitely go through the existing fire polish. You could do that. I like the more is more with fire polish with me. You could certainly just use the one in the center if you want them hooked. But I like the way this looks because they move around. They kind of move around and um, then you have more fire polish on it. So you have more than just the one on each set of X's. That's me personally. Make it your own, as always, guys. All right. So let's add our four millimeter. We are always happy to hear your ideas and suggestions. Okay. <laughs> okay, Vicki, I'm glad you were talking to someone else because I was completely confused there. All right, we're going to do one more here, and then I'm going to show you how to take everything off the loom and how to finish it. Okay, there's two, four, six. 
and then eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go one, two, and three. This is our first row, and we're going to go in through the third. Okay, are you understanding the concept, guys? Let me know if you have any questions before we move on. But it's just that simple. And again, as someone suggested, you could just go through that fire polish, one fire polish, if you just wanted that look. But I like the way it looks with the two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So as long as everybody seems good, I'm okay for now. Sabrina says, easy, easy peasy, guys. You got this. So let me just put my needle in here so I don't stab myself to death because I have been known to stab myself with these needles. Oh, we're talking about cup chain. Wow. Ah. So I'm just going to push these beads out of the way, guys. And you're just going to want to grab a button. It's whatever you prefer. You can do ribbon ends. You could do a slide clasp. If you wanted to do a slide clasp, you would need to add in some seed beads here on the end so you could put your slide clasp over it. Um, I'm just going to do a regular old tie everything off, add a button to it, okay? So I just have some buttons here that I purchased. Any kind of button would do. Jules has some real beautiful wooden buttons. But I, like I said, the bling is on me. So, <laughs> so basically it's just this simple, guys. Here we're finished. We're all tied off. We ran our strings back through our work and tied them off in the center. Glued them and then pulled them to the bottom and trimmed. Okay, that's how you get a finished look on your knots. Okay, so we're going to cut this off of the loom. And what I have here, guys, I'm going to raise this up just a smidge now. Okay, so you can see a little better. So what I have now, I'll keep my fingers over the warps on this side and bring my thumb around. And I'm holding on to those so I don't get so much kickback when I cut. And I kind of just push in slightly flex. I'm pushing this into my belly. And this is my technique, but I push it into my belly just slightly and then trim. And that gives you less recoil with the projects, in my opinion, from it coming off of the loom. Okay. And then once this side, you can just cut this one off easily. And then you have these loops on the end. I usually just cut those in half so they're easier to tie off. And you can see by using that hole as a guideline, when I started adding my beads, that gave me plenty on either side to tie off with. Can you use a magnetic clasp instead of a button? Absolutely. I use tons of magnetic clasps on my pieces. I don't know. I don't think I have any. Okay, here's a wrap bracelet that I made, guys. And it's just a simple loomed bracelet with some beading. And this one has a magnetic clasp. I love them. They're great. So, gives you an idea. So, what we're going to do here, guys, simple, simple. We're just going to take three of these strands and we're going to tie them together and make a knot. <clears throat> And I just work that down with my finger so I can get it as close to my piece and as centered as I can. Because, of course, we want to make it look nice. Just making sure all my strands are coming the same so I don't have one loop sticking up or something like that. So we just do a little knot there. I just do three and two. It works fine since we have five strands. And the same thing here.
Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. I appreciate you. Always nice to see you here. All right, so we have our two knots on that side. Flip it. So my string, same thing. Tie three and tie two. kind of came together before I wanted it to. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to work it down loosely down toward my project so I can get it where I want it. Okay. Just as simple as tying off knots, guys, on this part. <clears throat> Right, same thing, just working this down. Okay, there we go. Simple as that. So we have our knots on. And what I'll do, this is this button has a smaller shank on it, a smaller hole in the shank. So I'm just gonna take the side that has two strands and I'm just gonna run that through. First off, I'm going to even them because it makes it a little easier. Okay. And I'm just going to run those strands through the button base. Or the button hole, not base. <laughs> and it can be a little tricky with the smaller shanks and smaller holes on buttons. But put that through. And see with the two it went through fairly easy and then i'm just gonna tie this off <clears throat> okay make sure my button is where i want it and i'm just gonna pull these strands i'm gonna flip this over get in the middle there guys until I feel comfortable with where it is. And don't pull too tight that you're going to pucker up your sides. So they're going to pucker together. You don't want to do that. All right. So I want it in the center. Flip this over so I can see a little better. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a second knot in it. Now make sure you always glue your knots, guys. Because you don't want your bracelet falling apart or falling off. Because you didn't glue the knot for the button. Just use a little bit of GS Hypo. Then you have us being naughty. <laughs> Vicky says, first you have a cr us crisscrossing, then you have us being naughty. I think we're in trouble again. <laughs> well, you know me, Vicky. <laughs> so I'm just making sure it's where I want it. You can always put a third knot in if you wanted to just to make sure it's nice and snug. So there is the button side. And then to make the whole side, I just take the three and two and I just tie a knot. And I'm gonna tie this loosely until I can put it on my wrist to see where I want it, where it's gonna fit me the best, I should say. And I'm just gonna take this one off so I can do that. All right. Kind of just do a loose knot here. And I don't know if anyone has a better technique, but I always just put it on my wrist and see if my button will go through the hole there. And it looks like it will. I like my cuffs to be kind of snug on me. I just like the look of it better. So I'm just going to tighten down those knots. You can add fire polish onto these strands like we did. Was that last week or the week before that? Um, you can just add some of the six millimeter fire polish on the ends if you want to, to dress it up a little bit. And then I'm not going to cut my ends on my button right now because I do want to glue it before I cut them. But this is our finished project. And this is without cut string. So remember when your strings are cut, it'll look a lot nicer there. But there you go, guys. 
that's the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to turn the camera around now and I'm going to close this up so I don't make you seasick. I'll be right back here. Ooh, there I am. Okay. So I hope everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, it is lots of bling, but that's pretty much my name is lots of bling. I actually have a friend of mine, her little kids call me bling bling. That's my nickname. <laughs> so I have a problem but thank you thank you jay thank you guys absolutely gorgeous trish thank you thank you joan very pretty thank you i appreciate you all being here with me i just love you guys and i just enjoy thursday nights at seven so much i just look forward to it so here again is our finished project again guys if you have any questions concerns whatever reach out to us we'll more than help happy to help you um, I did not end up finding out the winner for last week. Let me just double check that I didn't get a message. Maybe I did. Let's see. She said, um, Jules says she'll announce it. She'll announce it a little later on. So it, just a quick reference. If you have stuck around, Keep in mind, guys, if you want to, every week we give away an, an original Jewel Loom um, kit. Jules gives it away. So if you're new and you have not um, liked us on Facebook, subscribe to YouTube and join the newsletter, go ahead and do that because it will enter you into a drawing to win the wonderful original Jewel Loom kit. So don't forget to do that if you have not. Subscribe, YouTube channel, like Facebook page, join the newsletter. Okay, guys? So on that note, guys, that is it for me tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all being here. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.